Welcome to the creek. We have tadpoles, we have water bugs. There are lots of things floating on top of the water, floating in the water. And if you look, there's a lot of things growing because of the water. Even though this creek may not be here all year when it dries up, we still have a lot of plants that rely on the water. Not all the water stays on top all year long. When it dries up, there's groundwater underneath. And all these plants and trees, they can still get their water all year round. Whether they're absorbing it from the atmosphere around them, like in the morning when it feels like it's kind of wet outside on everything, or they're absorbing it from the water that goes down into the ground and stays there all year and doesn't evaporate. It gets soaked up by those deep tree roots. So have a look at this watershed. What do you notice? Have a look at this ecosystem. Can you tell what's surviving in the water? What's surviving on top of the water? Is water alive? Nah, water's not alive. But everything alive needs water. What else is important here that's not alive? What about the sunlight? What about the ground? What about all the mud that the tadpoles are wiggling around in at the bottom of the creek? Even though those aspects of the ecosystem aren't alive, they're still important for the survival of all kinds of organisms. Let's think about the food web. Let's think about how energy makes its way all the way from the sun all the way up to the tadpoles. In the water, you have algae. Algae is like a plant that is very, very small, but when there's enough of it, all together it looks like perhaps the green slime you've noticed on the bottom of a lake or in a pool. Algae gets its energy from the sun. It absorbs all that energy in the daytime, and as it grows, it grows and makes sugars. And then we have some tadpoles and some fish and some insects that swim around and eat the algae. And then maybe some birds eat those and they're all connected together. All these little food chains from one organism to another all interconnect in a great food web. Welcome to the creek. What's your name? Uh, Zoe. Hi, Zoe. What do you have there? We got two tadpoles. One big one and one small one. Um, the big one has little hind behind feet. What do you know about tadpoles? What's going to happen to them? Uh, soon, hit the, some of them, they're going to they're going to have front feet, and then after that. The tadpoles are going to become frogs and lose their tail. Can you show us where they came from? Okay. So they came from over here. I got it. Over That's a hawk flying after another bird. This whole bottle is a complete ecosystem. Do you know what that means? A complete ecosystem has everything it needs. It's complete. All of the food, all of the nutrients, it's all in there. Can you draw a diagram or a model of your ecosystem? Let's have a look. If I want to draw a diagram, it's going to be like a drawing, but it's going to be more specific and maybe it'll have labels and words on it. So I'm going to draw my bottle. And there's my cap. And here's my water level. And here's my bottle. I have, it looks like two sprigs that float on the top.
one and two. And my snail, I want to make sure that it's, it looks like it's the right size because it's important to show that it's not a big snail that takes up the whole bottle. My snail is smaller than my bottle cap. I'm going to use that as a reference. If my bottle cap is this big, my snail is going to be no bigger than that bottle cap. And my snail right now is sitting on the plant. There's my snail. I have a very nice drawing. Now I'm going to turn it into a diagram. I have a plant. And I'm going to say since I have two plants, this is plant number one. Number one. Over here I have plant number two, my snail, am I done? All I've done is labeled the living parts of my ecosystem, but as we've learned, for an animal to survive, they have to interact with everything in their ecosystem. So it's important to make sure that we're labeling not just what's alive, but all of the parts of the ecosystem because everything is important. We have the water. Without the water, it wouldn't be an aquatic ecosystem. I can even be more specific and I can say fresh water because it's not salt water like the ocean. We have our cap. And we have our plastic bottle. All of our organisms interact with what is within the ecosystem, whether it's alive or not. They obviously have to interact with the water, it's what they live in. The snail and the plant have relationships with each other. The snail relies on the plant so that way it has somewhere to lay its eggs, it has something to eat, it has something to float on. The plants rely on the snails because the snails leave waste behind and the waste that floats in the water, it feeds the snail. So they have these relationships with each other. This is kind of a diverse bottle because we have two different species, but if I put a fish in here, if I put a lobster in here or a crab or some other critters in here, there would be more diversity in our ecosystem. So. I want to make this more diverse. I want to make this more like a lake or a watershed. A watershed A watershed is a place where water and land interact. That could be a creek, that could be the side of a mountain where rain rolls off the hill, that could be a river, a lake, an ocean. I want to make this a more diverse watershed. Here's what I'm going to do. I am going to turn this into a planter and I'm going to plant some seeds on top. If I add another species, another organism, I'm going to grow some beans in the top. The beans are going to sprout because they'll get water from the, the lake or the pond, our water vessel, just like in a true watershed ecosystem. All right, get your materials ready. You're gonna go ahead and make yours too. All right, let's make sure you have all of your supplies. You need your little bottle of ecosystem. You need something to empty it into while we do some construction on the bottle.
I have a pair of scissors, I have two coffee filters, some tape, and I'm only going to need a couple of beans. I don't need all of these. So we're going to recreate a watershed ecosystem. First thing we're going to do is very gently, we're going to pour out our water because we have to cut up our bottle. Your plants and snail may or may not come out. My snail is deciding to stay on the bottom and you know what? You're fine, pal. I don't want to cause you any extra stress, so I'm going to make my cutting quick on this, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this first um, pressed ring right here on the water bottle and I'm going to cut the bottle right there. Be careful not to ruin the top because this is going to be a planter for our seeds. Hang on for the red. Try and make one little hole and now I can get in here and cut straight around the top. Alright, not so bad. This top I'm going to I'm going to flip it and it's going to set right inside here and see how it sets there. I'm going to take a marker. I should have set this out. I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to look at where the tip of that is because I need to make sure my water line is just above it. This is going to have to touch the level of water and you're going to have some help. You're going to have some coffee filter to act as a wick. And a wick is something that soaks up, so it's going to soak up water to water your planter. You won't even have to water it. You'll have to make sure that the water doesn't completely evaporate, but for the most part, you're not gonna have to water it every day. All right, so that gets turned upside down. I'm gonna set that aside for a moment and start reassembling. I'm going to put my plant back in and I'm going to make a mess. I'm gonna, one second. Do I have a cup? Well, the shark cup doesn't really fit. No, the funnel, the top. You're a genius. I have a funnel so I can pour it. Well, no, because it's the same width. You're not a genius. Okay, you are. You're a genius to me. I love you. Okay, I'm going to gently, hold on, pour this in, try not make a mess. One second. Yeah. Ah! Okay, okay, okay. All right, I need to check my water level. I need to make it I need to make it above this blue line. Okay, hold on. Might be too much, let's see. Is it too high above the blue line? Maybe a little too high. I really want it to be just at, just at the level, there you go. I want this to really be just at water level. There we go. Just touching it. Next, I've got all this extra water here. See, I had a nice full bottle. There's still plenty of water in here for the plant and the snail to survive. You can always just add a little more if you need to. All right, so I'm not going to tape it down yet. Next, I need something to act as a wick. It needs to soak up the water from here into the planter. So see how I folded it so I can just press it in, maybe about that far. And now I'm going to open it up like a flower inside. That way it'll stay in place and it won't slip out. Okay, see, I opened it like a flower. It's going to hold right there. I'm going to take this now and put it in here and this is really going to be my planter. This is what's going to hold the seeds. Okay, I'm going to stuff it down 
And it's going to give it, since we don't have soil, it's going to give something to cradle the seeds or our beans. And um, I think we're ready. That's really it. So let's look at the parts. We have our planter, something to soak up the water, and the base with our plant in it. You can make a different ecosystem if you want to make it out of something other than a bottle. If you have all these same parts, and think about it, if you had to make a diagram, would everything still get the resources that it needs? You could make, you could make one out of a big mason jar, or a big plastic tub that's left over. You could make it out of your favorite glass that you have just up in the cabinet. As long as you have the water vessel, you have something to hold your seed or your plant, you have something to soak up the water, and you have access to sunlight so our plants can still grow, you have essentially a complete ecosystem. So let's go ahead and put our bean in here. I can put a couple right down in there. All right, they're in the water. I'm gonna pour a little water on top just to kind of get the absorbing action started. Have you ever noticed that if you use a towel to dry off that's really, really dry, it's kind of streaky and it doesn't dry as well? But if you get a towel that's just a little damp, it seems to soak up the water off of you so fast. Well, water is attracted to itself. So if I put a little bit of water it'll attract the water up to it. And it'll kind of kickstart the process. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. All right, I'm going to wipe off the sides and I'm gonna add a little tape. If I put this in a window, I have cats. They could knock it over. If you don't have cats, um, this might just be fine to sit in a window, but I'm going to put a little tape just to make it more safe. Just a little bit. So when I see you on Flipgrid, not everybody will have something like this. Yours might look a little different. You might make one out of a different container. But I can't wait to see your watershed ecosystems and Maybe if we check in next summer, maybe we'll have some plants growing. I had a great time learning how to examine ecosystems with you and how to take care of them at home. And I hope you take some of this and think about how your actions affect the environment around you. All right. Thanks, guys.